Heck yeah, brother! Welcome to Georgia, bud. <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and, uh... All right, not power wheeling, not power wheeling. Okay, cool. You gonna give it a go? No, I'm not going to. I told my wife I wouldn't, I'm not going to. I'm a man of well, my come word. Come on, come on, why not? It's too wet, look! <laughs> I was about to be like, F your wife, do a wheelie! <laughs> Second bike, Jigs or 250? What is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy <laughs> oh Noob. We are here today doing the adventure bike thing, standing up in parking lots, hanging out with none other than, there you go, stand up, bro. Show that trying, donk off. I can't stand up that well here. <laughs> Show that juicy dumper. Uh, <laughs> right. Chase on two wheels here in Georgia. Woo! Now, if you guys are wondering what the heck is going on, why, why am I on a Tenere, why am I a Chase, what the hell is going on? So we have a fun trip out here that we're doing filmed a bunch of cool content you can go and check out on his channel we did Tenere versus Super Tenere kind of a big adventure day in the saddle seeing what it was all about and uh, yeah I'm bopping around on this Tenere 700 I rented off of Twisted Road if you want a cool bike that you can rent uh, go and check them out the link below get a free day of riding with my link and you can get a cool bike like this We've got a bunch of cool videos coming out with this bike hopefully if we can film everything we don't get more weather like this because this is pretty dicey for a Texas boy like myself. What is this stuff coming out of the sky, Chase? What the hell is this? Um, so this is rain and it doesn't <laughs> happen a ton, but it makes for the road to be an adventure now. So yes. as earlier, it was just dry. There's no real scary stuff, but now everything's wet. And if you touch this stuff, you die. So that's the game we're playing. Well, I'm on these knobby tires, so I feel like I'm gonna die at any moment, but I, <laughs> oh, okay. I will You're try just... to... <laughs> I'll try to keep this bike upright and not activate my Twisted Road insurance. Um, <laughs> right. So for today's video, we're doing a fun dual vlog. I heard you guys like those with especially that guy right there, Chase on Two Wheels. You have a very popular dual vlog series you did with Yummy R6, not Yammy Noob. Oh my God, the amount of Two comments very we different got on people. that series. Yes, 100% different. Yeah, oh, we got a two red light coming. extremely different people, not the same human. I know it's hard to understand sometimes, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, today we're just kind of bopping around, and uh, as I told you, I'm going to be the shepherd of this dual vlog, and so I guess I will posit you a question, Chase, if you This is kind of like, this could be the new uh, interview thing. You know how, like, hot yeah. ones, so you do the interview of, it's yep. just a dual vlog, but for the world, it's like, oh, it's such an edgy thing to do. Yeah, they're like, holy shit, they're talking, and they're on motorcycles. How do they do oh it? Oh my god. I don't know how they do it. Okay, so for people who don't know your channel, which... Probably is a handful in the audience, but most people know I'd say you got a pretty big channel. Uh, tell them what you do. What are you all about, man? Uh, so, had the Chase on Two Wheels channel for a hot minute. We make a lot of different type of content. I think the thing that a lot of people will have probably seen are the uh, first rides. So, we, uh, I link up with a dealership here in North Georgia, ride a bike for the first time. They basically talk through the process. Um, and we got a cool camera car that we get to follow the bike around with. So that's our really popular thing. We do motorcycle builds similar to yourself. Uh, we do do a little more than we uh, than putting on fender eliminators and exhaust. We <laughs> <laughs> we uh, tear bikes hey, down. Hey, sometimes we don't even do that, man. <laughs> uh, well, what we do is we our whole premise is wrecked bike rebuild. We start from a wrecked motorcycle that. Uh, either is totally salvaged or something like that and we basically rebuild it into what a lot of people would consider it a dream bike and give it away just like you people support the show we give the bikes away uh, and then other than that it's just you know kind of general motorcycle content gear reviews uh, random bike here's why videos so that's kind of what we're all about over on over on c2 dub headquarters c2 dub uh, as many people might know as well you were kind of one of the first guys doing the bike giveaway thing, man. I, I remember many years ago you did your first uh, build on a bike, did the wreck bike rebuild thing. Really right. innovative thing that a lot of people ended up copying one way or another, I would say. What, what, what's your take on that? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I do think I was the first one to try that model out. I, I was kind of given an opportunity. I had a company reach out and they were like, hey, if we give you a salvage motorcycle, will you take it and make videos on it <laughs> and uh, my thought process at the time was i don't want another bike but i want i want to take advantage of the opportunity i'm sure you can understand that that yes. sentiment um so yeah i came up with the whole like 
let's do a Patreon page. That'll buy all the parts, and then we'll give the bikes away. And, uh, which is why it's called Wreck Bike Rebuild. And now we're, you know, in season five, making, building three CBRs at a time. Terrible mistake. Don't ever <laughs> let anybody do it. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are. We're, we're currently in the midst of building a CBR 1000 into a Street Fighter. Uh, and that's where we are, man. That's, that's what we're doing now. I don't care about people doing the same thing because it's like, what, what, what am I going to get mad about? People are making really cool content and, yeah. you know, I, I created a business model around that you could wrap a YouTube motorcycle channel on. And the more people that do it, power to you, man. If you have the channel and the funds, like, rock that shit out. And I think that's a great thing and a, a great viewpoint to have where it's like, it's not a zero sum game. Like, it's all additive. Like, we're all in this weird motorcycle niche together trying to do it on YouTube. And, you know, right. the more people, the merrier. Like, that's what I always say. I've never. You know, I've, I've seen so many people copy our style of like, you know, list videos and even the voiceover right. style that we do. And uh, I'm not gonna get mad about it. I'm like, you know, I think maybe you, you're kind of like me, it's like, I'm, you know, we're the OGs of it, right? Like we did it first and we probably do it best. And I think you feel that way about your rec bike builds where it's like, you know, nobody's going as in depth as you guys are with the bike. I mean, <laughs> right. you, you have two frames completely powder coated and all this crazy stuff like, you're going Mariana Trench deep on these hoes, you know? No, yeah, it's we go a li we go a little too deep if I'm gonna be yeah. honest. But you're going to the Earth's um, core and shit. <laughs> right, we're we're actually <laughs> bored with the Earth, and we're gonna go over to something like <laughs> Venus. We need we need something deeper. Um, that's totally that was what she said. But uh, yeah. So the thing is, though, even if me and you, let's just say we both rode that motorcycle and we made a Tenere 700 review. Yeah. You have an entire life that I have not experienced and your your description of something is not going to be anything close to mine. So like, nope. you know, people, I've had that question before. It's like, do you care about people making the same content? Or we made a video, something like low CC bike comparison or something. And uh, somebody commented, it was like, oh my God, people are doing this to death. And it was like, there's so many opinions that people have. Like, it doesn't matter how many times a video is done. Yeah. Because uh, everybody's different, you know? And the thing is too, there's so many different people finding that video versus other videos. And, you know, I think people on YouTube think that because they watch something, everyone else watched it too, but that's totally yes. not the case, man. Like, totally not the case. Also, if you're doing a wrecked bike thing or a, a bike build, all you're doing is like helping out the algorithm and people finding bike builds. And if I'm doing a bike build, I should be excited that a big channel's doing a bike build. So that way more people are gonna have bike build suggestions. It's a... Uh, it's a mentality that people should really just drop this whole like, oh, he's making content, so I should. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty dumb. childish. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I would say enough YouTube talk. Let's talk bikes, because that's what uh, I'm very into and the people on my channel are very Yay. into. Yay, yes. And yeah, let's, let's chat bikes. So you're on this MT-10. I've seen it in your videos a couple times, and I yes. have to pick your brain a little bit about it because you mentioned that there's a a funny story about why you have that bike, right? So <laughs> right. You, I, I want to hear this. So I know okay. you, you're head over heels about the bike. So tell me about the MT-10. I, I love this bike so much. So if you notice, there's not a plate on this motorcycle. I, I just figured you were a squid. I wasn't going to judge you, you know? Like <laughs> No, there's... So I actually bought the motorcycle, uh, I think like a month ago or something like that. And I've had this back and forth at Yamaha because I bought it under my business. Yeah. And I didn't realize that the checks that I, I the check that I sent them to buy the motorcycle with, it had an address from where I started my business five years ago. <laughs> you didn't update so, it with your bank, <laughs> bro. It was literally, <laughs> it was literally a house I lived at like uh, five or six years ago. So they sent all of the titling information oh, to no. that house. Oh no! Oh god. So, and obviously it's Yamaha, so like these people got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm yeah. like, hey, I'm so sorry. <laughs> can I <laughs> can I give the title to me? I got the title for this bike two days ago. Oh my so, god. And now, and then when I got it, obviously I went to the DMV and they're like, yeah, you need a, uh, a bill of sale, which Yamaha told me they probably wouldn't need. Of course. Of course you know, they need it. Georgia yeah. needs it. So I'm like, hey, can I get a bill of sale? And can I get it to this address, please? <laughs> <laughs> so I've insured it. I've, I've got the title. 
I literally just need to register it. But oh my god! Just don't 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 pay attention to this part. <laughs> Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I would yeah, tell you, as a, someone who bike, I, love it. As, I I want to hear more about what you think about that bike. But I was just gonna say, as someone who buys so many bikes, dude, I've had titles sent to uh, old apartment addresses. I've had to go get replacement tide. I've everything right. you could imagine to do with the title, I have done as well. Um, right. But yeah, you were saying that you're head over heels with that bike. What do you love so much about the MT-10, man? I'm a big fan as well. I think it's a great bike. Right, you spend some time on it, so you you yeah. get it. Um, so first off, I'm an old man. I'm getting to that point where, How old you, are you know, again? <laughs> I'm 33. 33? Uh, I'm 33, turning 29 man. this year, so I'm four years younger than you. Look at you. So you're not an old man yet. Not uh, yet, no. But I started doing my channel, you know, like 10 years ago, so I've been riding for a hot second. Um, and I've had my R6 time. You know, I rode an R6 for like, probably like five or six years. And, you know, it was cool. I had my little fun days, but at this point in my riding life, I need something, cause I, I ride rain or shine every day that I can, unless yeah. I'm, I'm doing some like filming thing and I need my car. Uh, I ride the Jeep every, or uh, the MT-10 every single day. So I need something comfortable, but I also need something I can you know, if you get a little, you want to do something stupid, you just want to... Yeah, you can do a little, oh, some of that, no, right? That, luckily, it's raining, so I'm not going to do anything <laughs> stupid. But I, this bike, I have it in mode three, which is the slowest mode. If you moderately throttle up in first or second or third, the bike will power wheelie. Yeah. Which is, and also it sounds like this. You know what I'm saying? SC Project it's, just saw a shout it's out, it's Nate, for sound. motivation. Uh, I love this thing. It's it's everything I need in a motorcycle right now. But I do, you know, I, I do recognize that uh, a motorcycle, a good motorcycle for you is very like in the moment because we all change mm -hmm. as riders and people. So right now, perfect bike for me. Uh, in a year, come talk with me. I'm just kidding. It'll still be the MT-10. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't know where I'm going, by the way, so just oh, a heads fine. up. I'm, I'm just cruising around with you. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also super soaked, so I'm not going to do any power wheelies, unfortunately. Yeah, totally. I don't think you'd even catch traction to do it, honestly. I don't know. It's a, it's a magical machine, man. You've got your blinker on, so I don't know if you are turning left or not. I'm never turning. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to clown you, but we've been riding all day today. You forgot your blinker several times. I, I am. You so and Spike can commiserate over that because he also so forgets bad. his blinkers. Me and Spike are the same guy. Then. <laughs> you turning? No. Why is your blinker on? Shut up. <laughs> My blinker is not on. You see it no longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I agree, man. The MT10, dude. It's just. It's a delicious motorcycle. That's the that's the adjective I always use for it. It's got that R1 frame, R1 derived engine. On the right. side of the tire, the thing is just so good. It's so good. Uh, it carves a corner like no one's business. I love the MT10. Great I bike. do I do uh, understand though. You know, having it on the channel, you see comments. It is a polarizing look. I get some people don't like it. Yeah. It looks kind of like a Decepticon. If that's not your thing, you're not going to like it. But you, can, you if like you're that like stuff me, though, right? Yeah. If, if you're like me and you like the look of it, I mean, it, it's really hard to beat, especially for the value you get out of it. Yeah. Um, well, I will tell you, one of the bad things, the, one of the few bad things is, uh, dude, I'm at the gas station every single day. Like, <laughs> now... Is that the way I ride it, or is that the bike? Yeah, know, you know if you're doing saying? all them power wheelies, it's probably the way you ride it. But, it's you know. hard not to, Yams. It's I hard not to. Oh, I got my friend. I get you. I wheelie basically every bike I get on. Well, okay, you get. I don't it. do. I don't do it well. I just want to put that out there. I don't do great wheelie. Everyone knows yeah, that. I can't. We should say this on YouTube. Yeah. Just because we ride and make videos, we are not professionals, and we do, are no. not the best. We're not the best at what we do. No, do you ever I, get I that? am. Huh? Do you get that where people? Make the assumption that because you have a larger YouTube channel, you are expected to have a higher caliber of the things you can do. Do you notice this? <laughs> no, people are constantly surprised by the things I do do. They're like, oh, we thought you sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's because Noob is in the channel name. So anytime, you know, I'm carving oh. up like a pretty good lap time or sliding a bike around or doing wheelies, they're just like, I still get comments. People be like, what? This guy can wheelie? So you've like, set your like you've set yourself for forever, up. Man. Yeah, See, I'm I've set over myself here. I'm, up. I'm chasing on two wheels. They're like, oh, two wheels, dude's pro. He knows everything. So like, yeah. no, I don't, guy. No, I don't <laughs> at all. There's it's no way a, to know everything, man. You it's just a gotta crap shoot on the on the best day. 
yeah, you gotta, you gotta, I mean, there's, I would say there's like certain areas of motorcycling I know better than others, obviously. Like I, I'm trying to get familiar with all aspects of motorcycling. Like I was telling you earlier, like I've been getting into motocross and riding off road. Right. Sport bikes are still near and dear to my heart doing this adventure thing every once in a while what is what is your purview would you say is like your thing with bikes what would you say is like your your zone honestly uh right now it's just the kind of like i mean it's gonna be a boring answer but the majority of the riding i do is just like around town like doing a little bit of highway stuff a little bit around town and just like having a good time because like we were talking about this earlier there's not a lot of time you know, like I, I shoot weddings with my wife on the weekends and then I work all week. So the all the riding I do is riding from home to work. And then, you know, if I'm feeling a little frisky, I'll like do a longer path home. So, yeah. Jesus. Uh, so it's kind of like the just enjoyable, casual riding thing. Yeah. And that's I think that's why, you know, we were talking like that's why this is perfect. Because on the way home, I can scare the hell out of myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's uh, that's that's my boring answer. I think, if I can see into the future, touring bikes will be next. That touring adventure style, uh, hashtag Multistrada. But I was I was gonna say I've I've uh, known about your Multistrada fetish for a long time. Yes, yes. You make I it publicly a... known very often, you know. So <laughs> I do. I have a dream bike that I'm on, <laughs> and I have a re or I have a realistic dream bike that I'm on, and I have this floaty dream bike of like i don't want to afford that but if i'm dreaming i mean you know you're you're a lot like you're a lot like me where you'll make a video that has nothing to do with the multistrada but you'll just mention <laughs> right. it you're just like man you know the multistrada you start talking about it apropos of nothing uh i that's did how notice I am. that yeah i noticed in first rides i did a, a video on a multistrada bike speak <laughs> all the time after that suddenly like Oh wow, this feels like this. Buy the Multistrada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, let me ask you this as well. Uh, since you are much like me, a content creator on YouTube, as you I know, am. there are there are certain unique properties of having that job title, right? What is your biggest pet peeve about the job, or the commenters, or things you see people say all the time? And you're not allowed to say people calling you fat. <laughs> okay, cool. That's thank you for uh, pointing that out because that just fluctuates. Kidding. You know, uh, yeah. sometimes sometimes that's a true statement. And I got no response to that. <laughs> but um, pet peeve. That's a, that's an interesting question. Yeah, like it what's is, something that kind of gets really, under your skin? You know. Yeah, it's a, it's a unique thing. I think um, as a lot of you guys probably know i take a lot of pride in our camera stuff yes uh, so our videos tend to be a little higher produced a little when, a little a little, a little just this much. guys if you've um, never seen this guy's channel and you've never seen his setup <laughs> i mean i was asking him at his shop i was like what cameras do you have he's like oh we got this one that one's seven grand we got this one we got that oh i forgot we had that eight thousand dollar one in the corner like this guy <laughs> loves his camera and his production equipment like yeah it's ridiculous so i think rainbows rainbows ah. um, i think the thing that probably gets under my skin is when i know there's a mess up in a video but because <laughs> of whatever reason whether you know we just could not re-render the entire video and go through the entire ordeal to get that video back up and fixed so i mean i'm sure you guys have this oh the my video's god not all the perfect. time all you guys are putting videos out every day, so of course you understand this. Yes. The video's not perfect, but it's rather you'd rather get the video out than it be perfect. And I'll put the video out, and I swear to God, I'm like, nobody's going to notice. And then that one guy oh, notices, dude. and I'm like, no! Nah! <laughs> every time, man. I feel every like any time you guy. tell yourself they're not going to notice something, they do. YouTube right, commenters, I'll in my you. opinion, are somehow the most observant and not observant people ever. <laughs> right. It's crazy. So my worst thing is on first rides, it takes a lot of time in the first ride to get all of the audio kind of sounding great so that the music isn't too loud compared to the bike, compared to my audio. Um, and it takes a lot of time. So if a first ride has to get rushed out, that's the thing that gets dropped off. Yeah. And I swear to God, dude, every time it's like, oh, can you really, can you level out your audio? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, for my 30 minute video that I'm rushing out, I'm going to spend four hours and I'm going to go through every audio clip and, and even yeah. everything out. 
And I'm like, I want to do that, <laughs> but it's also like, but bro, I ain't got four hours to do that. Yeah, so, it's, it's amazing how many uh, film producers and audio engineers and doctors and lawyers there <laughs> yeah, are in the right? YouTube comments. Like, man, they're really qualified individuals, you know? <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, they don't make any channel content. So it's kind of hard to really know. But, you know, yeah. who's to say? So I'm curious, you're on this MT-10 now. Uh, I remember you told me you have a WR250X back home. I Great bike, by the way. Kind of underrated, in my opinion. They, they didn't make them for very long, and you don't see many of them, so that's a cool bike. Right. Uh, you mentioned you had the R6. What else have you owned, or do you own right now? Um, so currently, all I own is the WR and the MT-10. Uh, oh, kind of with the MT-10, you know, because of I, I feel like but. such a degenerate in comparison, man. <laughs> I've got like five motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, honestly, dude, I haven't had that many bikes. I had a Daytona for like a year. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But it, was that yeah. yours or... Oh, yeah, because you, you sold it yeah. on that one website. That's right. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. So, I uh, had the Daytona for a year, which is really cool, but... If I'm going to be honest, I bought the Daytona when mentally I had already shifted to wanting and needing a naked bike. So yeah. I didn't really get the full potential of it. Um, and other than that, I have my the first bike I ever had, which was a uh, 2005 SV650. Granted, when I say R6, I mean four of them because three of them were stolen. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, God, three of them were stolen. That's crazy. I, yeah, I, I lived in Atlanta, there was no garage space. It was, oh, um, damn. Yeah, I had a lot of bikes stolen. It did great for views, though. So, yeah. if you ever if you ever want to get a lot of views on a video, get your bike stolen. But, uh, um, Spite actually had one of his bikes stolen, but he did not make a video about it. Now, no, I feel wasted like he opportunity, have. wasted yeah. opportunity, man. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's honestly it. But you know. With all the first ride videos I do, I've got a lot of experience on a lot of different motorcycles, so yes. I do have a good vibe on what I like, what I don't like, uh, you know, what fits me as a rider. So I haven't had that many mini bikes, but I've put a lot of seat time in a lot of different ones. I think a large portion of my audience would be interested to know the answer to this question that I'm about to ask you. It's extremely important, all right? I don't want to hype it up too much, but it's an important <laughs> question. You ready? Let's go, let's go. Because you mentioned lots of first ride experience, you know, there's there's two bikes I want to know your opinion on, okay? Okay. How do you feel about Royal Enfields? Interestingly, uh, so I've never ridden one, so I can't really talk a lot. No, about yes you it. can. I've never ridden one. I, tell, I talk shit about them all the time. <laughs> well, here's what. I, here's okay. All the information I have is from my guys that went on went to get on Motofest and rode Royal Enfields. Oh, they because did the flat track bikes. Yeah, those are great. Well, well so like Royal Enfields are, are uh, what's the correct way to say this? They're more cost effective. Am I right? We'll take Ooh, a look. Very, very, po very political. I like that. Good. Uh, yeah, so they're a cost effective bike. So I do dig that. Uh, I'm a very big proponent of we we need diversity in the motorcycles. You know, we can have our Panigale V4s that cost 20 something grand. Um, and I was showing you those little Venom bikes we have in the shop. Those are not amazing motorcycles, but they cost less than $2,000. So, you know, it, for what it is, you are, you're getting what you pay for. Uh, so in that respect, we're not going to run that in, uh, in the wet. Um, in that respect, I like the fact that Royal Enfield's a thing. Uh, I would love to ride one to see what the ride, like how premium the bike felt. Not that it needs to feel premium, but like, how put together it feels. Yeah. So I like that it's available for people that don't want to spend 20 grand on a bike, 15 grand on a bike. Uh, but I've never ridden them. The guy said that they really enjoyed riding them. So if a bike is five or six grand and somebody enjoys it, then what does it matter? You know? That's true. That's so, true. All right. Good answer. That's my the, 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 the second bike, and it's very important. Actually, I actually have three bikes. I'm going to ask you about the third in a second. Second bike, Jix or 250? You know it's near and dear to my heart. That's technically the sixth bike that I own, but I don't consider it mine. All right. Uh, honestly? It's a great bike, right? I... <laughs> <laughs> I have... No, it's, another, it's such, it's such a turd. Another bike that I've made turd. very clear on my channel. <laughs> I think that bike 
It, is, it costs it's more than an R3, and it is a giant pile of garbage. It's such a turd. It's kind of crazy. Su Suzuki should be ashamed that they even offer that as a motorcycle that you can <laughs> buy in a dealership. It would be worth their money to just buy them all back and send them to an island, and you can yeah. only ride GSX 250Rs there. What's crazy, though, is Suzuki is so good about doing this in that you know, they'll put a bike out for sale that they've paid the R&D for like 50 years ago. And they're just yep. like, screw it, we'll just sell them. And I've, I've seen them sell these bikes. I saw a Jixxer 250 in the wild with a paper plate. I was like, someone purchased this brand new. So do you know that thing where when you uh, notice something or start talking about it, you see it more? Yeah. So I swear to God, after that first ride of the Jixxer uh, 250, <laughs> I started seeing them and uh, and I, I got comments on the first ride because on the first ride, naturally, trashed it. Yeah. But I, I'm if I trash a motorcycle, that's I'm trashing it as a bike for me. Yeah. So clearly, th there's an audience of people that want to pay more money than an R3 and get a lesser package. So but a whole lot less, man. A whole, like, it's got a cradle frame. I think that's the thing that got me upset about the bike. Like, I, I shouldn't be upset. It doesn't matter to me. But when you can buy an R3 for less money and have that much more fit and finish on a bike, bro. Yeah. Who the hell? But I mean, who knows? Maybe their dad rode Suzuki's and they're hardcore fan of it or something. I don't know. Something's got to make sense. It just don't for me. Ah, wet, wet paint. Oof. A bit of a puddle there. All right, so we can both agree. Jake's your 250, absolute turd. Uh, the third bike that I want to get your opinion on, and the final bike okay. I'll ask you about, and it's one that is near and dear to my heart, and it's grown on me quite a bit. Ooh. The Suzuki Hayabusa. So. How do you feel about those? So I've done one first ride, and it was literally one of the first five first rides I ever did. So that was years I, ago now, right? I yeah, got... That must have been... Yeah, it was like a decade ago. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I have grown as a rider. I rode a ZX-14 <laughs> the other day. Um, I also found out in that video that the Hayabusa has a fan base um, oh, that dude. are, let's call them, very passionate about the motorcycle. <laughs> uh, so... As including somebody. me bro i own one <laughs> right so i i was a, a young motorcycle reviewer and i was yeah. like what is this this is garbage i hate everything uh yeah. and just talk nothing but bad about it but we were talking earlier the, the new boost is out now and uh just because i give suzuki shit about some things doesn't mean i'm going to automatically give them shit it's the same way with harley davidson I will give yeah. a company shit if they deserve the shit be given, but if they make a cool bike, they make a cool bike. So I think this new Busa needs to be the one I, I redo a first ride on because I rode the ZX-14 and uh, I can happily say that a bike cannot be for me, but I can review a motorcycle and be like, I can understand who this bike could be for. So I think that'll probably be what happens. I'll be able to ride the Busa now, like current Chase, and be like, you know what? <laughs> I can think of 500,000 people that this bike would be for, <laughs> based on the the first Hayabusa video. I think that's the sign of a relatively mature and, you know, more grown up rider where, like you said, you can ride something and be like, you know what? This really isn't for me, but I can see who it would be for. Uh, we have in the shop right now still, someone's I think picking it up soon because it's a loaner bike, uh, right. a BMW R18, the big cruiser that BMW made. Do you know about this bike? Um, I had from Brian and Bo, because I think they rode them at Get On, and yeah. they were like, have you seen this thing? It's uh, nuts, And I looked dude. into it, I was like, my god, it's a whale. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is that? Even in person, it's unbelievable we're, we're how left, large right here, it is. Way. Okay. And uh, yeah, that so was a bike where. So it's that big where, in person then. Like, oh, dude, like I have to, I have to straddle it to move it. I can't stand up and move that bike. It's so big. No way. Yeah, oh I gotta, gosh. I gotta sit on it. Jake can move it because he's he's a strong boy and he's six foot four. You know, he's a, a healthy lad, right? I can't do right, it. Right, you're five ten, <laughs> right? Is that right? <laughs> five, five ten and a half, five eleven. We measured ourselves yeah. earlier. <laughs> I will take every inch that I can. That's interesting because you know there's some bikes that look huge. Like in video and stuff and then you see him in person you're like this isn't that bad yeah so that bike is just giant then 
No, it's it's massive. Easily one of the biggest bikes I've ever ridden, and it's just so large and in charge. But um, you know, it's the type of bike where, like you said, it's, it's for somebody. It's not for me, but it's that that doesn't make it a bad motorcycle. You know? Right. Exactly. And honestly, nowadays, I'm of the opinion where any new bike you're gonna go ride, unless it's something like a Jix or 250, they're <laughs> they're good all man. pretty freaking good, dude. Like, I have not ridden a brand new bike that I'm like, no, this kind of sucks. Like, they all work right. pretty well. Yeah, that's that's kind of one of the things I get into with my first rides is like, if you're buying a bike these days, you're for one, the amount of options that riders oh have. Oh my god. It is, you know, I look back in the day and I remember when I was thinking about starting riding and I was looking in the market and my options were uh, the very old Ninja 250 or I could go the 650 class. Yeah. Those, those were the options. That was it. And now you have so many options as somebody that's never ridden before. I love it, man. We're in a, we're in a really cool time for, uh, for riders. Yeah, we're, we're like in kind of a golden time for beginner riders. Like, you don't have to go get some embarrassing Ninja 250. Like, you can go get an R3 or a Ninja 400 or, a, you know, there's so many cool bikes that you can go buy that are appropriate for beginners. And the fit and finish on some of these bikes is like, for even for the, the low CC bikes, like the R3, the fit and finish on that bike is phenomenal. It's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's got little, uh, little cuts into the gas tank like a... Uh, Ooh. R1M. It's so cool. For uh, for aerodynamicness, of course. Yeah. All right, not power wheeling. Not power wheeling. Okay, cool. You going to give it a go? No, I'm not going to. I told my wife I wouldn't. I'm not going to. I'm a man of well, my come word. On, come on, why not? It's too wet. Look. <laughs> I was about to be like, fuck your wife. Do a wheelie. <laughs> <laughs> I got no traction. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're it's not like, going to. I'm like, you're, I'm you're, you're not. You're not going to hook up yeah, at all. You'll just spin. Look at that. All right, cool. Now that I've uh, <laughs> ruined the bottom of the boots. <laughs> That's one of the bad things about doing motorcycle reviews and gear reviews. You end up never paying for gear and then <laughs> you treat it like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my street gear tends to last a pretty long time because I, I ride pretty chill on the street and I don't ride that much on the street. Dude, right. my track stuff, I'm on like my third suit. Uh, my other one went through like five different crashes. I'm on like my sixth pair of boots because I drive into the pegs so hard that I keep popping holes into my boots. <laughs> right. It's nuts, man. It's like I go through track gear like it's, you know, candy or something. Bro, I, uh, so f uh, we recently did the R7 launch and I had a suit that I had literally rode around town in one hour afternoon. Oh my God, it's probably so stiff. And then I went and did the track day. Bro, I was getting on the bike like, all right, this is the position I'm in, and this is how I will stay. I, I literally cannot move now. Oh, it took, funny. like, it wasn't until the afternoon that I could actually do, like, you know, move around efficiently. It was terrible. Yeah. I should have definitely just, like, slept in it and take a shower in it or something to, uh, to break it in. I don't recommend doing track days on a brand new suit. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, you got to break them in a little bit. Wear them at home for like a day or two, and then you should be fine. Right. So we were talking about it. You say that nowadays, you know, the kind of riding you do is street, you know, highway, kind of bopping around town. Is there any type of riding you really want to get into? I think you mentioned touring. Do you want to grab like, you know, I, shit, you're on the perfect bike right now. You just want to get your MT-10 and do like huge distance on it or something? Right. I mean, so the touring thing I, I think is uh, secondary right now. I, I want to do just one long as hell ride. Yeah. Um, we recently rode from New Orleans to Atlanta. We did it in one day. We like flew out and came back. What's on the two distance tigers. on that? Yeah, Triumph, <laughs> Triumph was just like, hey, we got two tigers in New Orleans that we need in Atlanta. Do you want to fly out there and bring them back? <laughs> yes. They're, they're like, we don't, we don't want to pay for a shipping company, so you go do it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, so they get content, and we get to do the super fun thing. So it was a total win. Yeah. Um, but I do want to do it on the MT-10 just so I can get a feel for it. But I got to tell you, man, after that R7 launch, I want to do track days so much more. Oh, my, God. my friend, you are talking to the right guy. Well, like, it, it's, it's hard because, like, there's so much involved with it, especially, like, if they're done the weekends. 
and we're in wedding season, I'm uh, not gonna yeah. be able to make it out. So it makes it difficult. Uh, but yeah, if I if I could have everything my way, uh, track days, I would be doing two track days a month every single month. Is is what I would like to do. Yeah, that's that's about how many. No, I, I do more like four a month probably. If on a good Jesus. Month. Yeah, dude, in 2020, man, between like my racing and my actual just track days and stuff, I, I must have done like 50 something days at the track in 2020. Dude, that that I got a phenomenal. I got a lot of seat time, yeah, and you know I I as I, I will happily admit I'm not an expert racer or anything, but I feel like right. I've got a really good set of skills for riding on track at this point, and right. it feels it feels awesome to you know exploit a machine in that way and then when you come back to the street it's like everything's in slow motion you know it feels so good well it's slow motion but it's also you realize how much you can't go fast oh there's so much more in the bike yeah (laughs) uh i mean you see these people just like going absolutely balls to the wall on the street and like and i'm i'll be the first to admit like i went through a phase where i rode like that on the road you know it would be me like too. <laughs> all right going to the it was like going to the mountains let me put my track gear on and then yep. go ride on public streets it's like you know you have you're, you're coming through a turn is there gravel i don't know is there oil i don't know is there a car i don't know but you yeah. have so many unknowns and you don't even realize those until you do a track day and it's taking all of your mental space to just navigate this track at whatever speed you're going. Yeah. And then you're like, dude, if I did that on the city street, like, I would die. I would 100% die. Yep. So, it's one of the interesting things about a track day. Not only do you, like, hone your skills in, because you only have to focus about your riding and your body position and all that. Yeah. But you then come to the road and you're like, okay, if I did all that, I can't focus on the car. I can't focus on the road conditions because you don't really have to focus. Heck yeah, brother! Welcome to Georgia, bud. <laughs> I uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and uh, I you apologize know. on behalf of all of our good old boys here. <laughs> that dude, literally, like one wheel was spinning. I, I really don't yeah. know what. You know, this is his only opportunity. The, the ground's wet. He's like, all right, here it is. Everything is made for me here right now. Let's do this. That's funny. Oh my god but yeah like on the road you really need to be going at like that 55 60 percent uh yeah and that doesn't you, mean you, you can't push it you know you can go to the mountains and push it but you can have a pretty high skill set to uh to have that extra mental space yeah well you let me know when you want to come to texas and rip up some track days because i've got four different facilities we can go to and i've got plenty of bikes and you just you just let me know if your editor could put an exclamation mark above my head and then <laughs> and then maybe a noise of like Whoop. so and then track it to my head so it's like wobbling with me that'd be great okay oh, cool. he's really asking a lot out of him <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> uh, but yeah that sounds fucking awesome dude if i can uh if we can get that set up i will i will take you up on that every single day yeah we're gonna take a right on this road is there a turn lane there is a turn lane we will then navigate gotta... that way I gotta show you and flex about my race bike to you as well. Yeah, point. you have to prove that you can actually ride. <laughs> <laughs> I was down uh, look, one. Uh, yeah, I look, was down one. You were so down we're one, man. <laughs> uh, all I'm gonna say is I saw your R7 video and I was like, motherfucker, <laughs> no, I you wish, can't motherfucker, take me back I wish I was there, one? bro. I fucking you, wish I was there. <laughs> Chop that ass damn up. It. Don't take me back to negative one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm glad you fit into the, all the guys in the shop very well. <laughs> so what's your what's your uh, favorite bike to ride on track so far? Uh, man, I'm going to sound like a, such a simp, but it is my race bike for sure. Um, so I'll give you, uh, if I may if I may take a moment, I'll give you some, some stats and things I've done to please, it. Please, uh, please. So it was, a, it was a bone stock Daytona 675R that I bought in 2019. I did the very dumb thing and built it up myself and crashed it and did everything. So uh, right now it's got full exhaust, flash race ECU. It's doing 125-ish at the wheel probably. So it's pretty All decent. Right. Uh, it's down to 364 pounds wet and ready to ride. So it's extremely lightweight. So that right. makes a big difference for when you're actually riding on track and manipulating it. Uh, right. It's, you know, full race plastics, all that stuff. It's got a Brembo RCS 19 master cylinder, so the stopping power is ridiculous. Fully direct brake lines, no ABS, all that stuff. Uh, what else? 
It's got the quick turn throttle from Motion Pro. It's got all the goodies. Yeah. So you've done that bike up. It is like. Oh yeah, it's I, I competed with it in CMRA. Even won a race or two, if I may say so myself. Oh, look at you. Look, do you want me to brush your shoulder off or can yeah, you do that for yourself? On, come on right here. Come on, it's right out. Come on. Give me give me a brush. Come on. Yeah, okay, there you, you. go. You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was I only won it because the guy in front of me got a five second penalty because he jumped the start. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually got second place, yeah. But, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think what you'd really enjoy, because I really liked it, uh, I did endurance racing on a Ninja 400 in 2020. Right. So you do these six-hour races with a team of, like, three or four guys, and you just go out on track for, like, an hour and a half chasing just people you? down. Yeah, just you're on the bike for an hour and a half putting down, like, 55 laps or something like that, you know? I mean, like, how how hard can your pace be for that period of time? You're you're running race pace. <laughs> you're going you're as going, hard as you can. Yeah. Oh my good god! Do yeah. you train for that? Like, you have to. Yeah, I, I was. I mean, I was like physically training and stuff. Um, as I told you, I got into cycling and all that. But right. yeah, you gotta you gotta train and you gotta get your your strength up because your quads. I mean, you come off the bike, you feel like you're made of jello. You know. No, I, I tell you, uh, obviously I'm not in the greatest shape that I've ever been in, but I had no idea how out of shape I was until I went to that <laughs> R7 launch, and I was like... Huffing and puffing. Done, yeah, it, it's hard work, done. man. I mean, granted, we were there all day. I, I probably was on track for three hours that day. Yeah. But, I mean, so we did ride a lot. It's not like we were just, like, lollygagging. For but, sure. Uh, but dude, holy shit, I did not realize. Like, I mean, I knew track, you know, takes a lot of out of you because obviously I've done track days before. Yep. But my googly goodness. Yep. <laughs> I was so <laughs> done. The drive home, I was just like, I need a Tesla right now that can just do everything <laughs> for me because. Yeah. That's how I felt at least. All right, I'm not going to run this red light or slide out there and get myself killed. I mean, it would make for good content. <laughs> All right, we are my, my 50, we are 51 it. minutes into this vlog. Considering we started at minute nine, I think that'll do us right there. That's uh, perfect because we're two minutes from the shop. Beautiful. How good is that? Well, Chase, this has been a wonderful dual vlog. I hope people enjoyed it. Uh, they can obviously go check you out on your YouTube channel, Chase on Two Wheels. Check out your wrecked bike rebuild, all that good stuff. Anything Hell else yeah. you want to say to the good Yammy Kingdom over here? It was a pleasure talking with you, sir. This is a great interview uh, setup. We should do these more often, where two people ride at the same time. It's very edgy. Would be pretty sweet. Well, like I said, if you want to come down to Austin, got plenty of bikes and cool stuff for you to check out, so we could definitely <laughs> do it again. Are you saying I could borrow one of your seven motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, fuck you. You can't borrow any of my bikes. <laughs> oh, I'll, no, I'll put you on the Jixer, dude. You'll love it. As long as you promise I don't have to ride that piece of shit. <laughs> Do you know what the consider. best part about the Jixer is? You don't have to care about it? You don't have to care about it, but it's also got a performance Toche pipe on it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to take the MT-10 all the way to Texas, and I need oh, to do my shit. long trip on it. Oh, that way shit. I'll have the bike, we'll be good to go. That's cool, that's cool. Well, we'll be waiting for you there, man. Oh, what a perfect, well, look at this. We get a little sun going down on our adventure. It's because we're real riders, man. We ride any condition, we're any time. We're real riders. Hey, it's a wrecked bike. I wonder if they want to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> See, right, you, guys. Look for, uh, you look for new ones. I have to look for uh, destroyed ones. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're a dumpster diver. Not me, bud. <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll catch you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed this upload. See you later.